so you want to play The Sims 4. That's an excellent first step. Now, whether your device can handle The Sims 4 is another story. Today, I'll be showing you how to check whether you have a device, whether it be a computer or console, that is compatible with The Sims 4. Hi, I'm Weezer and welcome back to We Sims. I help Simmers navigate the more technical side of things with computer guides, fixes and recommendations. And as part of my technical niche, we are starting this Sims Newbie or a little bit longer of a name, but I didn't want to squish too much of it in. The Sims 4 Ultimate Beginner's Guide. Wait, this, the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to The Sims 4. That's, that was going to be the original title. And then I realized that this is going to be a series and all of those starting with that exceptionally long name means that it's going to be a very long thing to read when I just want to tell you guys that in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to check your system requirements, basically. Fun fact of Sims trivia in The Sims 1, the tutorial family that you played with were the newbies and that is the family that I've named this after nostalgia. So what I'll be doing in the Sims newbie guide is starting with the Sims 4. I'll be taking you through the technical aspects as well as the gameplay aspects. This will range from covering topics like checking device compatibility, which is this video, as well as how to buy and install the game and going through the Sims 4's unique features. There will be more advanced uh, kind of videos coming much later in the series, but for now let's get the basics done. So, can your device play The Sims 4 is the important question here. You can play The Sims 4 on either a computer or a console. If you have a PlayStation 4 or Xbox One, congratulations, you have met the system requirements to play The Sims 4. Go on and get into the next video in this series on how you can get it onto your console. <laughs> if you do not have a console or you want to play on computer, whether that be on a Windows PC, and this refers to both desktops and laptops, as well as Macs, including iMacs and MacBooks, then things aren't actually as simple for you. When looking at the system requirements, I'm going to be referring to the standard edition of The Sims 4, not the Legacy Edition. If you want to learn more about the Legacy Edition, I've made a couple of videos on it. You can check it out here in the corner. So this will be to play The Sims 4 now in 2020 with all of its features online and off. Warning, Chromebooks are not compatible with The Sims 4. They run Chrome OS, which is not an operating system that The Sims 4 runs on. Cool. So moving on to definitions. So we're gonna be defining minimum requirements here as the most basic parts that your computer needs in order to play The Sims 4 at even the lowest settings. Recommended specifications or recommended requirements refers to computer parts that are going to allow you to play The Sims 4 on higher settings as well as be able to accommodate downloadable content more easily as well as custom content and mods for those of you who are interested in that style of gameplay. So starting with the specs comparison. First off, there is a simple way to check this without going into the detail that I'm about to show you. And that is to go to a website that is called Can You Run It? I have a link to it in the description. If it works for you, it will tell you which of your parts are compatible for The Sims 4 in your minimum and recommended specifications. But this program doesn't always work for me. In order to get the footage for this video, I think it took me eight download attempts of the software to try and just show you how it works. If you're a little bit more like me and you like to know the ins and outs of your computer, then keep watching. So the information that we're going to be looking for is accessible on both a PC and Mac. If you have a Mac, you can head on over to the spotlight search and type in system information. This opens up a report of all your specs that we're going to be using to compare to The Sims 4's minimum specs and recommended specs. For Windows, irrespective of whether you have Windows 7, 8, 8.1 or 10, there's a simple way to get all the information that you need to compare to the specs page. First, you're going to tap the Windows and R buttons on your keyboard simultaneously. This will bring up the run box. In the little text field, you're gonna type msinfo 
32 and hit enter. This may take a couple of seconds depending on your computer's performance. As you can see here, I am running a 64-bit Windows 10 operating system, which meets the minimum and recommended requirements. If you're running a Mac computer, you need at least Mac OS X 10.11, and I think that that is El Capitan, and this needs to be on a device that is newer than 2011, because you need to have Metal as a feature of your Mac, and that is a, another technical thing, but basically that is the, those are the requirements from an operating system point of view for both Windows and Macs. We will be getting into comparing the CPU and the GPU requirements, but we'll do that later because it requires a little bit more research. So look at your processor, write that number down, note it somewhere, because we're going to be coming back to it. Next, we're gonna look at RAM. And here you can see that I have 32 gigabytes installed, which exceeds the minimum and recommended requirements for the game, which is four gigabytes of RAM. So make sure that your RAM is more than four gigabytes. Disk drives, i.e. the things where you put CDs into, are optional, but applicable if you plan on installing the games with CDs, but we'll get into the specific ways that you can obtain the game in the next video of the series. But if you don't intend on using a CD to install it and by going like directly through Origin, then you can ignore having an optical disk drive. Then we're gonna move on to storage. EA uses the term hard drive here, but they're actually referring to the broader concept of storage. So to see this, we go to the components, storage and drives menu, which will allow you to see the amount of free space on your primary hard drive where the Sims 4 will be installing. So as you can see here, I have three different storage devices installed, but I play from my C drive, which has 213 gigabytes free at time of recording. This is more than enough for the Sims 4's base game, which requires a minimum of 15 gigabytes and says like one gigabyte extra for custom content and, and mods or whatever, and a recommended amount of 18 gigabytes. But in my personal opinion, Based on my experience and my current installation situation, if you want to play The Sims 4 and all of the DLC as well, and all of the DLC that's available, so all of the expansion packs, stuff packs, and game packs, as well as custom content, you're gonna need a lot more space than this. So in total, I would recommend trying to aim for at least 45 gigabytes of open space on your, store, on your primary storage device, because that will be enough to comfortably allow you to play the game with all of the DLC that you may install. The video card can be found under your display heading over here. Once again, keep note of it because we'll come back to it like we will be with the CPU. For Windows users, we're gonna need to look at our DirectX version. And it's very simple to look at this. You hit Windows R, so our little run box comes up and you just type in DXDAG. I'm running DirectX 12, which is newer and simply means that The Sims 4's recommended DirectX 9, 10, and 11 will be covered. And this isn't relevant for Mac friends because DirectX is a Windows application. Inputs just mean that you need to have a keyboard and a mouse to play the game. Please, please, if you want to play The Sims 4 on a laptop, invest in a mouse. It will make your life a lot easier and less frustrating to have a mouse and a keyboard so that you can use both of them because many of the shortcuts that you can use and ways to make your game quicker come from using keyboard mouse combinations and not trackpad keyboard combinations. Finally, The Sims 4 needs an internet connection for the initial activation and download if you're not going to be using a disk. You do not need an internet connection to play the game in general. If you want to use online features like the gallery, which we will get to in a later video in the series, you will of course need internet. But for the general game, you do not. So remember we noted our CPU and GPU? Well, we're coming back to that now. In the most simple way possible, we are going to compare the model that we found in our computer to a model that meets the minimum requirements and the recommended requirements for The Sims 4, for both the CPU and the GPU. You can virtually use any comparison website for this. It's very, we're not taking the data too deep. It's just a basic bird's eye view of will your processor or GPU be able to run it. Today, we're gonna to be using user benchmark. Please note, Please, 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 because I've gotten comments like this before and I will get them again and I need to make this clear. An Intel i3 five years ago or six years ago is not the same as an Intel i3 from 2020. Just like integrated GPUs in 2020, 
outperform many of the dedicated GPUs of seven or eight years ago. The purpose of benchmarking is to help us see how your specific processor or graphics card stacks up against those requirements because you cannot take it at face value that an i3 means it's bad and an i7 means it's good and that's the end of that or that an integrated graphics processing unit is bad and that because you have a dedicated graphics processing unit you'll be fine you cannot take those at face value i have left many links in the description to specific pages on user benchmark where we're going to compare the an example of a minimum and recommended required CPU and a minimum and recommended required GPU to the models that we found in our respective computers. The website is fairly simple. Just go to the second column and type in the model that you found in your computer, even if it's just a few of the numbers and click that. And that will give you a very direct, easy to see way whether you meet that either minimum or recommended requirement, whichever one you're looking at. For minimum CPU specs, I've pre-populated it with the Intel Core 2 Duo E4400, which is a slightly faster, and I do mean very slightly faster, version of the basic one recommended in the minimum specs, but it's really negligible, and will accommodate those of you with integrated graphics as well. For the recommended CPU, we'll be using the Intel i5-750 for comparison, then rinse and repeat for your GPU, for the minimum GPU requirement, I have listed the NVIDIA GeForce 6600. If you're on a Mac, just type in 9600M here instead and then compare it to what you have listed in your computer. The recommended GPU is the NVIDIA GTX 650 and this will allow you to play The Sims 4 on ultra settings with basically all the packs and I can tell you that even on my old gaming laptop which had the 670mx which is better performing than this one but in the same age and range from however many years ago 2012 I could play The Sims 4 on ultra settings smoothly no issues full HD so meeting this requirement is really all you need in order to run the game beautifully and smoothly. And there you have it, the first part in the Sims Newbie series. I hope that you have found some answers as to whether you have a device that can run The Sims 4. If you found this video helpful, please let me know by leaving a like and subscribing if you want to see more content like this and hit the notification bell if you want to see the next video in this series as soon as I upload it. My question of the day today is, does your computer, as it stands, once you've gone through the step-by-step -step tutorial, meet the requirements for The Sims 4? If not, which parts do you think you should upgrade next? I look forward to reading your answers. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Sul so, Sul. So. Funny, in Sims 2, when they hate someone so much, they get the wish to drink that Sim via the cow plant. <gasps> you're right! Oh my gosh, you're right. If they, if they really hate someone, they want... <laughs> They want to drink their life force through the cow plant. Wow.